Hello everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com and it's time to take a look at an iPhone 3GS. So I picked this up on Craigslist for $25 cash and the ad actually mentioned it was an iPhone 3G but the guy actually sold me a 3GS which is kind of good and bad. I wanted a 3G to sort of relive my original iPhone days. I never had the 3GS, I had the 3G which was my first iPhone so I kind of wanted to go back to that. But at the same time it's also nice that I got a 3GS because it is ultimately a little bit faster. The camera has autofocus and things. So it's obviously not in the best condition. If I give you a close-up of this particular 3GS, you can see that the back is pretty damaged. But it is important to note that everything is fully functional. The camera, the vibration switch, all the buttons work. The home button is a little bit iffy. More on that in a minute. The power button works, camera, dock connector, speaker, microphone, front earpiece, sensors, all that stuff works, which is nice. When I picked this up, this came with iOS 4.3.5, but I updated it to iOS 6.1.6. .6. I also jailbroke it so that I can install Ultra Snow to unlock the device. As you can see in the corner, this is running on T-Mobile US. I was a little bit lucky with this device because it is a new boot ROM 3GS, but it was made in a certain week to where you can still downgrade the baseband or at least install the iPad baseband and then downgrade it to a Ultra Snow compatible version for 6.1.6. .6. So all of that worked out, which is fantastic. Before I take a look at some of the software, let's just do a basic hardware comparison. You can see that compared to my iPhone 6 Plus, this the 3GS sits right inside of this entire screen on my 6 Plus. So that's how much bigger the 6 Plus is. In terms of thickness, you can see how thick it is if I just lay it on the table. The 3GS, even with my 6 Plus's candy shell grip, is actually thicker. So you can really see how far things have come nowadays. So now let's take a closer look at the OS. Here is 6.1.6, .6, default home screen here with some extra stuff on page number two. If we just go into settings real quick, you can see some options that I have. So we'll just go into about, you can see everything here, 616, this is the 8 gig 3GS, and it is running on T-Mobile, not factory unlocked. As I mentioned earlier, it was unlocked through Ultra Snow. So I still really like the way iOS used to look with skeuomorphism and things. To me, especially with the icons, it just required more creativity and better design than what we have today. It's really easy to make a flat icon, and it works, but... I just think that a lot of the effort put into some of these icons way back in the day was something that you should appreciate more. Even when we get into some of the apps, just the way the apps look, Notes I think is one of the more obvious examples like this. So this is the default iOS 616 home screen. Page number two has all of my apps. So I tried to take everything that I have on my 6 Plus, which is running iOS 8.4, and see what I was able to install on iOS 6.16 on the 3GS. And I don't really use too many apps on my 6 Plus, but as you can see, pretty much everything I have on my 6 Plus works just fine on the uh, 3GS. So if I really wanted to, I could ditch my 6 Plus for the 3GS, but I'm not going to do that. Let me turn on Wi-Fi because the T-Mobile SIM on here does not have a data plan. And I'm gonna go into TweetBot 2. Surprisingly, it still completely works. We just wait for a Wi-Fi to connect. There it goes. I don't know why Tinder is on there. I got rid of that a long time ago, actually. Never use it. Waiting for a TweetBot to open. Here we are. It's been a number of days since I last opened this, so let's just wait for it to catch up with my timeline here. The phone is, of course, a little bit slow, but it otherwise is fully functional. So you can see here that we are pulling in tweets. Everything works like it used to the home button, here we are at the home screen again, double tap it to get to the multitasking tray. Here we have the little widgets for controlling volume in your media player and rotation lock. I would show some camera tests, but we all know that the 3GS isn't really that great compared to today's cameras. Let's see what else I can show. Cydia actually looks like it used to. It doesn't have the iOS 7 design on the front page that it loads, so let's just wait for that to open up. You can certainly see how longer it takes to open Cydia compared to today's devices. So it still has the pinstripe background and so on. See, I'm not sure what else to show you. 
Uh, I just want to give a sort of a brief overview, but if there are other older phones that you guys would like me to take a look at that are relatively cheap to get, maybe $25 or less on eBay or maybe something on Craigslist, I can certainly take a look at that. I guess we can go ahead and open some of these old apps, so let's open Weather for a minute. This is what it looks like back in the day. Let's go ahead and open up the Videos app, even though there's nothing there. Let's see, let's go to the iTunes App Store app and wait for it to load. Here we are. We can take a look at some of the featured apps. One thing I will say about the apps that I did install is that I, for some of them, they required iOS 7 or 8, but you are able to install the last previous version that worked on this particular version of iOS, which again is 6.1.6. .6. Still trying to load the App Store app. There it finally goes. The featured section just seems to be taking a while. Definitely not the fastest phone anymore compared to today's standards. Let's go ahead and open up a web page. The battery indicator on my camera is flashing, so this might end at any moment. But let's go ahead and just go to Google. It's always the first thing that comes to mind. You can see how long that took. We just go to that, oops, no. get rid of that, go here, let's go to Google News, so here we are, loading websites, certainly not the best experience if I actually used the 3GS and I ditched my 6 Plus, I would just stick with Opera, eh, the Bing website actually loaded a lot faster than Google. If we type in, actually, we'll just go here. Bing News finally caught up with me. Official site, Bing News. So you can see that website there. And for fun, let's go to, there we finally are. Let's go to Gadget Unit. See how long that takes. Again, it's not the greatest experience nowadays. This would actually become frustrating really quickly. Waiting, waiting, waiting. I guess for comparison, we could go ahead and load some of these websites in the Opera Mini app. Of course, it does, doesn't render the web pages completely like it does on Safari, but it still comes pretty close in terms of rendering text and the actual important stuff on web pages. First time opening this app, I believe, so we have to wait for it to go through the setup. There we are. Now let's try to go to gadgetunit.com and you should see that it should load a lot faster than it would have on Safari. There we are, it is finished. Let's go ahead and open up a post. And there we are. Much better than what we experienced on Safari. But again, it doesn't render the web page completely properly or completely 100% that Safari would. Let's go ahead and open up the multitasking tray if I can get to it. It looks like I was getting some iMess. Oh, that's what's happening. It's pulling in all the iMessages that the phone would have gotten over the past seven days or so since this was last turned off. So that was just my quick overview of the iPhone 3GS running iOS 6.1.6, .6, jailbroken and unlocked. I am currently in the process of listing this on eBay. In fact, I think it just has four hours left on the eBay listing. So if there are any comments, questions, or feedback about this or anything else, feel free to leave everything down below in the comments area. But come on, settings. There we go. But if there's anything you'd like me to try and answer, go ahead and leave them down below in the comments area. I never did explain the home button situation, but you just sort of have to push a little bit harder to get it to work. But that's it with the video, so thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you all very soon.